Hi ladies, it's Elisa again. I know I just updated you guys. I think I posted that video yesterday, but I wanted to let you know exactly how the saline sonogram went while it was fresh in my brain. Um, so it wasn't fun. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but I think, I think what was worse was the HSG. That was by far more painful than me for me. Um, I know that a lot of people have different, uh, a lot of women have different different responses to both of those, uh, tests, but, um, this one wasn't pain as painful. It was more just really uncomfortable. Um, but I did cry twice. <laughs> um, anyone who knows me knows that I get pretty emotional. Um, but I think that I was nervous about getting there cause I'd never actually made that trip to the RE's doctor, uh, the RE's office by myself. So it was always my husband that drove. So I was a little nervous about getting there, but then once I got there, I started, my hand started shaking, and I told the nurse, well, I hope my blood pressure isn't too high because I'm pretty nervous. Because I think that once I was sitting there waiting for my turn, I realized how much I do rely on my husband and his just strength and, you know, balance for me. Um, so I think that I was going into it thinking that I'd be all badass and, and it wouldn't be a problem, but, um, I got there and it was really just scary more than anything else. I'd never done this before and it was just scary. It was scary. Um, but the nurse and I think what made it worse is that I am... I'm sensitive about like when I get my blood drawn I don't like watching the needle go in which I know some people like or like watching the blood going into those little vials I just I don't even like knowing it's happening even when I got uh, IVs in the past I have to look away <laughs> um so the nurse sat me down she's like oh I'm gonna explain everything that's gonna be happening today and so it was fine but she's showing me the saline tube that's I, I kid you not like this this wide and I was like this long <laughs> I don't know if you could tell it's like as wide long as my face and I'm like where do you think all that saline's going and she showed me the catheter and like during the IUIs I never looked at the catheter before because again I don't I don't want to see that kind of stuff I don't want a picture about where that's going but um she showed me the catheter and I was like <laughs> it was like 13 inches long I'm like where are you putting that so I think um so I start crying then, but not like sobbing, just a few stray tears. I'm like, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. Just get the doctor. I'm, you know, let's do this. Get it, get it over with. Um, <laughs> and so the doctor comes in. He's all, well, I hear you're nervous. Um, just so you know, I've never, I haven't lost a patient yet from doing this procedure. I was like, oh well, that's nice. Um, and then when I was doing it. You know, I, he's explaining everything that he's doing as, as he's going through it. And the nurse is, you know, trying to say encouraging things from the opposite side of the room. But without my husband there or, like, my mother or anyone there to hold my hand, I'm, like, gripping my t-shirt and holding onto my necklace going, this is fine. This is the next step. This is just, this will get me one step closer to my baby. But <laughs> still, I started crying again. I'm like, this isn't fair. This is scary and this is not this is just not fair that anyone has to do this and this is what I have to go through to get a baby so <laughs> it was just scarier than I thought it was going to be and I knew exactly what was going to happen so I think I was thinking that I was going to be easier the pain wasn't even that bad I mean you know when he inflate inserted the catheter and you would inflate the little balloon and that was uncomfortable. It was like, you know, an insta cramp. But it wasn't, it, the whole thing wasn't that, that painful or even that uncomfortable. It was more just scary. I was alone. And, and I thought that it wouldn't be a big deal because it's just one little step on this huge, scary process. But it was scary. So, and even though the doctor was so nice, he was trying to calm me down, trying to talk to me, but I was just sitting there on the table with my legs spread wide open doing this procedure that it was just, I just, I just needed him. And that was completely my fault. I told him he didn't have to be there. My mom offered to come with me. I told her not to come. I was like, this is not a big deal. This is fine. I'm just going to go right from work and it'll be fine. And I was sitting there, laying there on the table, going, this is not fine. That was dumb. 
And so I called my mom afterwards, or she called me, and I told her uh, that story. And she was, I think, more mad at me for not letting her come in the first place. So she asked me what I learned, and I said, I'm not going to one of those again. Alone. I'm going to have some sort of support. There's no reason we, you know... I think during this process, we go through so many things that we think, oh, this is just going to be one more. I'm going to let my husband sit this one out. I think that when we're going through this process, we think that we have to be Wonder Woman and badasses and that we should act like nothing bothers us because there are women who have it worse. There are people who have it worse. This process is harder for other people. And... I was trying to be a badass, and turns out that I need my other half or some sort of support. So that's my update. The HSG wasn't as bad, painfully wise, as I thought it was going to be, but it was more emotionally. It was emotionally worse than I thought it was going to be. But um, the doctor, when the procedure was over, he asked me if I had any questions, and like a goofball, I said, No, I don't think so. So, like, Except for, you know, our goal is between 10 and 20 eggs, right? And he's like, yeah, when we start stimming, you know, our goal is going to be between 10 and 20 eggs. I was like, okay, good. All right. And then he left, and then I realized as I was driving home that I didn't ask him, like, where do we go from here? What's the next step? Should I be expecting a call? Or, you know, did you see anything in there? <laughs> so I emailed him directly when I got back to work and um, asked him those questions, and he said that a nurse would be getting... Um, in touch with me soon to uh, tell me what the next steps were. So that's what we're going to be waiting on now, a call from a nurse. So I guess uh, if any other news comes up, then I will let you ladies know. And um, for right now, he let me see pictures of my uterus and ovaries on the sonogram screen, and that was pretty cool. Um, well, while he was looking at it, he said everything looked fine, so hopefully everything will be fine. So, uh, I don't want this to be a long update, I just want to let you guys know, it, um, we don't have to be Wonder Woman. We don't have to be Wonder Woman. We can rely on our husbands because we married them, after all. They're there to support us, and we should use all of our resources when we do these things. I know I've learned that I, I need my family when I'm going through these things. I don't have to, I don't have to do it alone. So, um, just remember, ladies, you don't have to do it alone either. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll be talking to you guys. Bye.